welcome everybody. I'm very happy to have yet another Pearl buff at the DevConf. I'm happy to see so many faces here, some of which I know for quite some time, some of which I know for only some days. Um, yeah, I'm Gregor, as you probably know, or have guessed from his description or something. We have prepared over the last days uh, some kind of agenda, which is now projected on the screen. As usual, I would like to start with a very short introduction round so that we all know each other and that also the people who are following along over uh, the video screen can match the faces to the names. So everyone who f feels like it might want to say the name and half a sentence why they are here or something like that. Salvatore, can you begin please? If you yes. want to. <laughs> yes, you have said already my name, my name is Salvatore and I'm in the Package Pearl group since some years, do the packaging, helping out with things in the last year a bit less, but still active. Uh, my name is Dominic Hargreaves, or Dom, and I uh, maintain some Pearl modules inside and outside the group, and I also co-maintain the Pearl interpreter package with Nico. Yeah, I'm Nico, Nico Tunis, and uh, used to do a bit more work with <coughs> the PKG Pearl, but uh, nowadays I mostly maintain Pearl itself. Uh, I'm Jonas, and uh, I'm part of the Pearl team, I'm happy to be, and a bunch of other teams, uh, mainly, nowadays mainly I uh, package the, the RDF related Perl packages and some move things. But uh, and anything that is dependent to that and kind of So uh, I'm David. I'm also on the team, although I think the amount of packaging I do these days is quite small. Uh, I guess I have a standing offer as team Git consultant. So that's my excuse. <laughs> <laughs> I think we have a noise spec Doubling group. Um, I'm Axel Beckert. I'm in the Pearl team for I don't know four years maybe. Not that very active, but usually present in the ISC channel. Um, yeah, well, occasional bug fixing and reporting. Hi, I'm Florian. My IRC nick is FSFS. Um, I joined the Pearl team like two years ago and it was also my entrance to Debian development. And Half a year ago I, be I was lucky to become a developer and um, that I'm very happy about. So this is my first DevConf to say hello to everybody and um, get to know you. Hello, I'm Introgeri. I'm a team member. I'm a, I'm a, team, I'm a team member for a while. And uh, I mainly maintain GTK and GNOME packages and try to do some more general teamwork from time to time. I'm, I'm, I'm Tomasz, Tomasz Tomas. uh, I'm quite new to the team. Uh, I uh, became interested uh, when I saw that uh, one of the packages, the uh, Mojoitus package, which, uh, which I'm inter interested in, was a bit uh, out of date. I wanted a newer one. <coughs> and, uh, I've been with the team for some years and my latest interest seems to be create my token which is used by the group in less space. Okay, thank you. So before we really start the technical aspects, who is writing to take notes and send send nice minutes afterwards, and who is monitoring IRC? Okay, cool. I'd be happy to take notes along with some someone else and Gobi. Okay, so someone else helping out in... Okay, then thanks. 
bienvenidos. Okay, so the first point we uh, have here, I'm just going from the top down. If someone wants to change the order, please just say so. Um, there has been this Lancaster consensus paper written, I'm not sure, some months ago by the <coughs> Pearl Upstream Toolchain Gang, as they call themselves, where they tried to, well, write down some current and future ideas for Pearl distributions. And I thought it would be interesting to have a short look at it to see if there's something relevant in it for us as a, as a group, as a downstream. And uh, Intri has already taken a look at it and added is it to copy. So I guess it's the quickest thing if you just run us through it quickly. Looks fancy. Okay, entry. Would you, would you mind uh, walking us through the Lancaster consensus quickly? <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, point one. Um, let's try to improvise. Part one was the minimum supported support the Perl version, which is 5.8.1 according to them now, so we don't have to care for it since even old stable has 5.10.1. Then there were some ideas about specifying pure Perl builds without uh, compiled XS stuff, which we probably also don't care about since we can compile stuff on all architectures. The next one is probably the most interesting uh, for us, it was about uh, clarifying some of the, those environment variables which are used in the, in the test suites, the, their meaning and who should use which uh, one. Mm, my understanding is that, this, that the results are quite similar to what we already have in our, in our team policy, <coughs> where we don't know, two years ago, three years ago, wrote down that we want to set this automated testing variable because this is supposed to be used for tests which are yeah, run automati automatically and that we don't want to use uh, the variables that are meant to be run only by the author at release time, which is either release testing or author testing or something like that. What's new in this Lancaster consensus is a variable called extended testing, which, as far as I understood it, is uh, supposed to be used for tests that may, may take yeah, extra time or extra resources, and where we might want to discuss if we want to set this always most of the time or not. Uh, Whatever. Uh, it sounds to me that this is better uh, bounced off to, to as you also mentioned here in parentheses, bounced off to CDPS and, and their paper since we always use either CDPS or their paper in the Perl team. So it's just uh, telling, informing these teams, one of them being me, um, that what what it is what it what makes sense these groupings that uh, the Lancaster has done it it sounds very sensible, and it sounds actually more well structured than m most of the other areas in Debian is doing. So this could be a perfect um, invitation for for more uh, tools to to hook onto this. I know from the JavaScript team that it would be lovely to if we had a hook if we had a way to express this takes a long time to do regression <coughs> testing of, then we could include. Uh, in a rapid insight, a, a, a hint, so that it's only done for these testers. 
test machines instead of the standard build. And I know that Doku is interested in exactly the same about when he's compiling for slow architectures, then he wants to s uh, skip some parts. And if we couldn't tell Dev Helper and CDBS, this is the kind of grouping that makes sense to do in Beho. It might very well make sense to the whole archive, to the, to the whole, whole of Dev. Um, do, do you mean that Dev Helper and CDBS should just set the variable or something more uh, sophisticated? Because you said hook in. I mean, I mean that the thing that we, well, Extended testing sounds to me like this is something we shouldn't set always in Debian because it's the kind of thing that will kill w uh, smaller architectures. So it's the kind of thing that we actively try to avoid in other places. So if there is something that is extreme testing in the Perl modules, we shouldn't set this flag here, <laughs> as I see it. But maybe I'm ah, just assuming yeah. that there are things that are, that are obvious here that, that isn't so obvious after all. Well, I think all th three va 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 variables sh should be set by both tools by default. And then there should be a way for the maintainer to override this and say, no, for this package, I don't want the extended tests I after experience. I'm thinking of uh, even pushing it further out to the build options or something like that. Because I don't think Deb Helper or CDBS is the place for that kind of heuristics, you know. I would actually expect even build D maintainers to set it globally for their build Ds. Mm -hmm. I think I'm lousy at expressing myself. I don't disagree with you. I just see it as the Perl, Perl upstream has formulated some very distinct variables for these things and in other way, uh, areas of, of other kinds of, of uh, code, it is more up in the air how to express. Is this a uh, very uh, extensive testing or is it simple testing or is it whatever, it, uh, is for what purpose testing is it? Where And these uh, groupings is very sensible in Debian. We cannot just say that up, uh, that uh, the built these should set these flags because then built these should set flags for Perl specific things and for JavaScript specific things and a hell of a lot of different things. The, the point of these uh, Debian-specific flags is that it is then up to each team or to each area to then tie the, the build-specific uh, flags to the, de the package-specific spe flags. That also didn't make any sense, I think. Uh, uh, just shut up. <laughs> <laughs> so if I can in try and interpret for Jonas. So you seem to propose some kind of uh, project-wide uh, standard-ish like thing for these testing environment variables. So uh, maybe we can just try and follow up with that with a few of the people who are interested in uh, the testing, uh, like the auto-testing and, and so forth. Um, I don't know who he is. Jonas? Maybe you? Me, Joey, whoever is working on uh, auto testing could be uh, 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 Holger, uh, and then uh, Doko or someone, whatever, someone who is uh, into the build D stuff. Some, a few people sit down. I just see, don't see a. It seems very nicely wrapped together in, in Perl area. We don't even need to discuss that. I think, and then we just bounce it off to this higher level Debian higher level, and then we go back here when the high-level Debian folks have figured out something that is cool for whole, all of Debian and link those two together. Does that make sense? Okay, that means we don't do anything specific now be besides what we have been doing. You try to get some people together and then tell us if this affects the Perl group in some way. Cool. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Um, Trying to quickly go to the other things, something about the build PL spec, which should not affect us. This install distributions database, I have to admit that I don't really understand it completely, what this is about. Has someone else read the uh, proposal, or whoever added this purple comments <laughs> seem to have read it? 
Ah. Well, it's, it's two comments, actually. No, this the second one is by me. But um, I was wondering what this is actually for and um, how this should interface with what we're doing anyway. Um, I was thinking of pack lists, which um, we're currently deleting from the per package, I believe. Um, and, um, well, because it's duplicating in information, which um, we usually manage with the DPKG. And um, because it's putting stuff in locations where we don't want to have it, I think. So I think we um, should wait and see how this is going to be implemented. And, um, yeah, how we perhaps can make our tools work with this. But unless um, we know more ex exactly what's happening, I don't think we can do anything. Yeah. Yeah, it reads, uh, in inventory of installed distributions, uninstalled tools, and tracking of dependency graphs. I mean, actually, we have the package and apt and whatever. So. Well, the way this could be used is when um, a, a per module isn't packaged and, and I use C++ plus or something to in install it locally in my own home and want to manage those locally okay. or um, user installed modules. Mm -hmm. But um, then the tool would need to know that there's some um, distributions it can uninstall and others which it can't even though, though they're there and stuff. So I'm not sure. It depends a lot on how this turns out to, to work, I think. Right, and the last sentence is implementation's details are left to the one implementing it, so we probably have to wait anyway. There are some ideas about post-installation testing, which are interesting because there's also discussion about this auto-package test and Deb 8, and there was just this talk about, uh, about the Ubuntu testing and someone already wrote here if this exists it would be useful to use it but i guess as if i remember correctly it all it also says the implementations are details are left to the one implementing it so we probably have to wait for it and keep our eyes open and then try to make use of it does this sound the ping stuff there is again me, and I wanted to ask if I've understood this correctly, that it's really just about uh, running the usual package tests again, the build time tests again, after a separate module, another module was installed to make sure my package keeps working. So I the result would be the same as the archive-wide rebuilds. Is that correct? Is that uh, everybody's understanding? Yeah, I, su uh, I suppose it would be the same, yes, but uh, it's kind of a more continuous pro process where you, you can keep on testing that maybe a bit more easily. I was thinking that uh, it would be kind of easy probably for most per modules at any way to <coughs> implement this test install target or whatever because well it's basically just running proof on, on the test suite without the dash B option, something like that. I know. So it might be quite easy for us to implement auto package test for just about all of our pack packages. Not sure somebody should look into that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I also thought about this. This, this might be a nice, a nice mess commit, just dropping this Debian tests control somewhere. Um, related to this uh, auto rebuilding, auto rebuilding the whole archive still only tests with the least possible build dependencies satisfied. And what we uh, I seem to see as it being the goal of this is covering a situation where they will have too much, so bloated systems. And that is a kind of test that is not done with Debian at the moment. But I is this that really an issue for us? Because on the build these, you also have the least uh I don't see this as being an issue for us. I see this as being what I what I as I read this this suggestion is a mechanism so that people who are using Debian, people who are using different kind of distributions, can is can hook into this and 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 do these tests on a system. So it's somehow making the test available after you have installed, and then those testing it could then do bloated systems in different ways. So it's 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 a different kind of testing vector that we would allow for others to do. And for ourselves, it, those others could be our uh, uh, testers, uh, th those doing these uh, system tests, runtime tests. It could be a valid way to do <coughs> runtime tests, also in Debian, doing bloated tests. Something we don't do now. So. 
So I guess there are, there are two things that this could be used for. One is hooking directly into the auto package test, which is designed for, well, mainly automated testing within Debian. And then there separately is, is um, giving users the ability to run those tests. I mean, they're related, but uh, I'd like to see if we did uh, enable auto package tests in Perl modules that they'd be that it'd be done in harmony with this. So, I mean, it, w it would be probably better to again, <laughs> unfortunately, wait yeah. and see what, or even you know, help contribute. Um, I had a side note. Uh, are we is somebody p or are we planning to respond in some way to or get involved in a discussion in dis general discussions about the consensus, the Lancaster consensus? Do we know who, do we have contacts with the people that wrote it at the moment? Anybody involved there? Anybody in contact? Yeah. <laughs> 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 okay, so um, our conclusion again is yes, m makes sense, but let's wait so that we can fit it together and not invent something on our own. That's right? Okay. Yeah, I think that was more or less... Okay, the, for the meter file specification, there are some ideas about improving the, the conflicts field, which we might then use in DHMIC Perl, maybe. Sounds reasonable. Yeah, and the rest is about about the C pen and, and pause, about permissions, names for distributions and, and stuff like that which should not affect us <coughs> except as as users who may maybe profit by some improvements. Okay. So um mm -hmm. Is this enough for the Lancaster consensus? You want to say something, Pinchot? No. Good. Um, luckily, we have our, our Git expert here, so maybe he can <laughs> start with the next point. Uh, the, the idea was just uh, we switched from SVN to Git two years ago. Two years is a nice time span. So we might want to use some minutes for just uh, sharing exchanges, exchanging how we feel about it, if there are some, some problems we have, or if there are some corners where we could improve our workflows. Or we can also just say we are everybody happy and go to the next point. It's, it's an offer. Yeah, I think I, I didn't have much to do with the actual workflow, which is mainly MR, right? So whoever set up the MR rules and, and so on. But um, I think it's worth just maybe a anybody who has a particular uh, pet peeve that, that they want to ask about. Uh, it, it depends whether you think it's a... S well, uh, let's just say anybody who has a uh, something that's annoying them about the team workflow, uh, I'll pass the mic to them. Jonas. <laughs> I hope it's also okay with uh, if I'm not uh, annoyed. I was more the opposite, asking is anybody annoyed that I have started uh, adding the upstream gits into the things. I find it pretty cool to have synchronization with upstream gits. And but I, I, I it, it bloated the RSC channel, but some cool people then fix the, the these hooks. So, other than that, is anybody okay? You're in favor, so. I I usually do that with my own packages outside the, although I don't automatically sync it. I don't find that too useful. But I do often keep upstream history as a branch in the packaging repo. So, I, I think as a general principle, <coughs> it's a it's a good thing. What what I do is is that every time they have a release and they have a corresponding release tag, then I link the release tag so that 
in practice, that with guild build packets, our current uh, general structure, that means that it's all getting pulled in. But it's tied together, these two uh, threads, every time there's a release. And I contact upstream and remind them if they forgot to tag their upstream <laughs> releases, <laughs> and they thank me for that a couple of times. Okay. So, um, go, go ahead. Another thing, uh, generally I don't like the system where the where the master branch ha doesn't have the patches applied. So that's kind of a pet mm. peeve of mine, but uh, uh, I always forget to uh, actually apply them when I'm testing something. Or so, but uh, I don't really have a good solution. We're using Git DPM for Perl itself. There was a presentation on that this morning, but uh, it might be a bit too complex for this group. I mean, there's uh, lots of newcomers every now, now and then. And, uh, I think, was it Russ Alberry who said that uh, it's kind of a da dangerously sharp instrument or something like that, so, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, um, so maybe I I'm happy to sit down and, and play a bit with patches applied versus patches not applied in our current uh, workflow, maybe, well, I'm at DevConf, and uh, it might not be such a big change for us, so that's something we can think about. It's something I've been thinking about in other contexts as well. So. Shall we move on then? Yeah. Okay, so the summary is maybe someone has a more concrete idea can about around patches and then we can discuss it again, right? Yeah, I think I, I volunteered to at least uh, try and examine the current situation and what it would mean mm -hmm. for us to change to have patches applied in, in our Sounds current workflow. Sounds great to me. And Jonas, could you please document how you pull in the upstream um, Git revisions on our website in the uh, Git workflow? Yeah, you? please. <coughs> Even better, send Dama a script to include in our tools to, <laughs> to do this. <laughs> okay. <coughs> <laughs> I, I guess uh, at least I uh, what experience I have with modulations uh, uh, the upstream uh, uh, git uh, git repository is uh, there needs some work uh, uh, to make the release actually happen and uh, that's what they do when they produ produce the tar tarball so maybe something more is needed which ah, I'm okay. not really that aware of but I, I'm not sure I understand the question. So are you saying you don't know how to work with uh, upstream history or it doesn't build right away or? No, uh, uh, but I'm saying that uh, uh, in the release process when they produce the tarballs, uh, there is uh, uh, some kind of extra steps involved. Uh, which uh, need to be included uh, when building the pair package uh, for Debian or, or producing the, the package? Uh, I think what, you, what, you're, what you're wondering is, is if, we may, if we might lose some information by syncing with upstream instead of using tarballs. Is that what you're talking about? That we are missing something that upstream is doing? That we are So for the people watching and didn't see into Jerry's laptop, uh, he points out a, an option to git import a ridge, which is in the git build package suite. Intrig Gary just took over the job because you already answered the thing that, is that uh, should be passed on to them. There's, there's no more. This is the thing I do. I don't do anything more. One more thing I do is I do both. You both tag the upstream, uh, git tag and the upstream tarball, both of them at the same time. That's very important, so. Okay, so maybe we sh should. Just one addition. Uh, actually, the same discussion came up on DevConf dis Discuss on the mailing list in the git build package uh, thread. And I explained how that works in a little bit more detail, just without <coughs> the actual command, because I had didn't had that in mind. So uh, there's also Git build package workshop or boss somewhere, sometime. Do you do this wiki page? Great. Which wiki page? <laughs> <laughs> Which wiki page? 
Yeah, okay. Well, I actually, uh, I have some uh, thing which uh, I think is missing in the uh, on the Git, uh, Git how-to because MR is only ma ma mentioned in the working with existing packages but not in the starting a new package and the addition of the new package to our global MR config is seems missing there. It's run by the this alias script. Oh, okay, so I don't have to do anything there. Ah, then maybe that should be Maybe that, that's the missing piece, yeah. Um, yeah, okay. So the next comment would have been that DH make Perl may be need to do that, uh, but that's never not, not needed anymore. Okay, um, it's one minute past four. So let's continue. Debian maintainers. There is this nice category of Debian maintainers, the people who have upload rights for specific packages. When this was introduced some, don't know, six years ago or whatever, uh, some sharp mind realized that this does not work for teams because at this time there was no relationship between, there's no one-to-one -one relationship between person and, and package, just some general al allowing and <coughs> allowing everyone. Huh? Uh, so we said at this time, no, we, we are not using this concept in the Debian Perl group. Now um, Ansgar has fixed this Debian maintainers thing, Ansgar in his capacity of FTP team member. So in theory, it uh, might be possible to use it now. Um, I just thought we should take a short look at it if, if this change in the implementation changes anything for us, if we want to revisit our decision from back then, or if we are still fine with not using DM at all. So can I ask if there's any Debian maintainers here who would like to have upload rights on some packages and that this would somehow make life better for you or, or for the team? Right. I guess I volunteered to forward those remarks too, didn't I? <laughs> um, Ansgar says there are some packages that have DM set and uh, my addition to that is that that's a bug. Currently. I mean, we could change the team policy, then it would stop being a bug. But I, I guess I'm not sure what problem we would be trying to solve by by starting to use DM permissions on individual packages. But I guess it doesn't seem like it would create a crisis either. So. Yeah. Correct from the people who are attending this meeting. But maybe just say that the next step to do in that area is drop a mail to the Perl team mailing list and say if everybody responds to that. And, and if no one, uh, then, then that's the answer to the question. Well, we could also say we wait for people who think they might profit from it to just <laughs> raise their hand. Yeah. So. Uh, could someone just uh, summarize what the change is and what the proposal is that we would, would happen for the Package Pearl group? So the change is that the Debian maintainer permissions are now managed in a more or less sane way in the sense that there's a database which keeps pairs of maintainer package in it. Previously, um, any package in which you were in the uploaders and had the DM upload OK set, you could upload. But we generally have been using the uploaders field more as a way of tracking who is interested in a package. So it would have required changing that. That's my, doesn't that seem like a fair summary? Yeah. Do we care about this database as a group? Because if a Debian developer decides that this package can be maintained by this person, that's something that the Debian developer decides anyway. So he can allow this and we are done with, with the thing. So 
what's what's here the group to decide it, it seems a little bit uncollaborative for individuals to to decide who can upload the team's packages without yeah. any consensus in the team or I mean I don't know it's necessarily like I say it's not a big crisis but it's odd for somebody say who is not in the team and doesn't interact to say well you know this package you can upload it yes, so, so maybe just drop a mail are you fine with me giving this permission or something like that? yeah sure uh, we can develop the mechanism if we think we want to somehow support it Let's wait until it's a problem. But we are spending already a lot of time, and we have no one raising the issue as being a problem. So let's kill it here. OK, so let's keep the sentence in policy. We don't use it as a group, which is still true. And if the question arises, yeah, fine. OK, low-hanging fruits meetings was an idea by Intri. So um, this proposal results from quite interesting experience in other projects about uh, having low hang hanging fruit sessions as a way mainly to get newcomers uh, feel welcome and find ways to help and also to well, clean up our plate by getting rid together of easy things that we can kill in a lot at a time in a small out out amount of time, <coughs> which well, helps getting the backlog short. And so I propose we well, we could try to have this like every two months or something like that, or uh, at least try it once and see how it goes. I'm happy to to, to organize some some appointment and suggested suggested tasks. Um, real life meetings or IRC meetings? IRC. Ah, okay. Oops. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, it already happens on IRC every day, but well, for those who are not on IRC so much, it I makes sense to have some agreed upon time when we can meet and and publicly welcome new contributors. Say, mm. hey, at this specific time, we'll be available to help you. I think there's a consensus to do that. Okay, so Great idea. next action. You propose the first meeting or something like this? I cool. will. Cool, thanks. Okay, um, then, well, actually, I'd like to change the order a bit so that we don't skip the Perl 5.18 migration, which is kind of important. I thought it might be nice if you could just in, in some sentences um, summarize the status so that everyone knows wh where we are and, and, and what everyone can contribute. Okay, so we, uh, Nico and I met with uh, Julian the day before yesterday and it seems there's no particular barrier to uh, completing or kicking off the migration by uploading 5.18 to Unstable in the next couple of weeks. Uh, the main blocker as far as the rebuild c rebuilds go is the subversion package, which is not a package, PKG Perl package, um, and it's not clear how that could be resolved because uh, it fails, fails to build on some architectures at the moment. Um, apart from that, there's a handful of other blockers which are mostly being worked on by various people around the room um, and another 30 or so RC bugs which aren't blockers but which will cause breakage once the upload happens and that list there uh, and really it's just a question of picking things up as we can but quite a few of the of the issues are unsolved upstream, so it's uh, from scratch, working out what to do for each one. Okay, so um, <coughs> I could uh, add the URLs to, to the copy file so that everyone has a starting point. Yep. This is the transition bug with the blocking bugs. This, these are the user tag bugs. <coughs> and there's also somewhere <laughs> this page and 
and Florian uh, calculated the reverse dependencies of the packages which have bugs to uh, to show the priority on on yeah. yeah and which packages can be removed because they have no <laughs> reverse dependencies so it's maybe not worth spending time on them uh, the only other thing i would i would say is that i'm currently rebuilding all the packages which build depend on Perl or Perl libraries, which may throw up some more. <laughs> it's, we've never done quite this test before, mm -hmm. uh, but it's just getting things in a, a good state in advance of the transition. Okay. Cool. Five more minutes. Oh, cool. Uh, yeah, package Perl tools package. Damian, one sentence. Yeah, uh, I started compiling all the um, tools that the group uses in its day-to-day -day work in a separate Debian package, which would make them available without some git checkouts and something, and we hope that this would make it easier for the newcomers to get started. I really like that idea, and I want to uh, join you in the effort. All right. Cool. Yeah, I think currently we are waiting for one license statement. <laughs> but besides that... Yeah, we can remove that. <laughs> besides that, the package should be fine soon. Okay, uh, jumping around in our agenda. Um, Damash, is there something you wanted to add from your personal list to the meeting? Yeah, I will try to be fast. <laughs> uh, <coughs> Some of them uh, are my ideas because I'm not uh, that uh, really involved yet, but uh, uh, some of them uh, uh, which might be interesting for others. Uh, what I want to do is uh, know the pair tools uh, uh, better, which are used in the Debian infrastructure because uh, uh, many parts of the Debian uh, infrastructure heavily depends on Perl and uh, uh, it needs th there are places when some help is needed. Uh, I want to keep Modulicious uh, in Debian as up-to-date as possible and uh, promote, uh, uh, pr I want to promote its, its use in Debian, uh, maybe even replacing uh, older or maybe not that better suited tools uh, because this is ki some kind of uh, uh, part of the modern Perl uh, uh, revolution of that uh, yeah uh, <coughs> my idea w I, I had an idea of uh, uh, making a list uh, uh, where uh, and uh, collecting best practices and things like that and uh, uh, Damien uh, uh, encouraged me to just do it to make the changes so that I think that's that's the thing what I will do uh, there are some work uh, going on with packages Debian org, uh, and uh, it goes in the right direction. Uh, I hope uh, in a maybe a few days or weeks. It, it depends uh, when I get access. Uh, the most Perl uh, infrastructure will be replaced with fast CGI, which is better suited for the DSA team. Okay, cool. And um, yeah, you know that you can always ask and get help, yeah. even if it's your, I, I, I your just, project. I just wanted to get a quick summary because we are kind of out of time, but uh, I'm uh, welcoming suggestions and, uh, and comments on things like that, and I will be on IRC to myself. Mm -hmm. Cool. So we have a half? A half minute left, <laughs> something like that. Okay, so Lintzian profile is just the idea. Lintzian supports uh, s uh, specific additional checks, and it might be useful to have some in our group to point to specific group policy thingies. Jenkins, uh, Holger is, is running Jenkins instances everywhere, and he also told us if we have some Perl Jenkins jobs, then we should ask him. Well, uh, there's uh, Jenkin, Jenkins Debian glue from Mika Prokop. 
Uh, I think it's not that in Debian, but uh, will likely be at some time, I guess, hope. Um, that tool makes it very easy to automatically build Debian packages out of Git, uh, check, uh, of Git repositories upon commit or push. And um, it can even export the build package in packages into a Rebrero uh, repository. So you can up get install and test the just build package very mm -hmm. easy. And I would be really <coughs> happy to see something like that for our infrastructure. We use it in a set shell team. Uh, and, and it's very convenient. You just push your changes, and half an hour later, well, such a takes a while, uh, you can up get install these packages on two architectures and just play around with them and see if you broke anything. That's very comfortable. Mm -hmm. And I really would like to see that for the Debian Perl group too, despite I think it's a resource uh, issue maybe. <laughs> can you help with the implementation? Pardon? Can you help with the implementation? I can try. Okay, so we can take a note that Axel knows more about Jenkins than everyone else in the room, right? <laughs> <laughs> Seems so. <laughs> okay, I'm afraid we're running out of time, so I think we have to finish the official part. I think we should thank Gregor again uh, for <laughs> running the buff and also lots of other things that he did for the team last year and before. Thank you.